All right, guys, welcome back to State of the Game. Uh, let's talk about GSL WCS Premier Div Division, a.k.a. CODES last night. Uh, Dan, I mean, I, I feel kind of upset personally that the two players that, that went through like gave the most boring matches, but it's only because they're compared to like this is, the other two this matches. Is, right? This has happened before. Right? Was it, didn't this happen with Lucere versus Gumiho? before <laughs> yeah where maybe, they had maybe. like yeah that was that one where it was on Aklon last season in the round of 16 they played in the losers match had the best match of the round of 16 and then were so damn tired afterwards <laughs> that like i think it's luke sierra just lost or gumiho just lost you just like but that happens but yeah no it, but the thing is tasia ver Can't people think. forget about the other matches because he other matches were really good. Yeah, that one was amazing, but the other matches were really good too, except for that last one. Yeah. That one was sad. Portrait. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit of a wash. But yeah, yeah, yeah all of them were good. I really enjoyed them all. It was it was a sick night at GSL. Like Fantasy I that True was probably time. the best best of three that I've seen in a long it was, time. It was a really good game, but it was entertaining at least. The, it was yeah, it was entertaining. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. like yes. the most thrilling of plays. Like right. Lings and Banes for 30 minutes, man. It's yeah. probably time to change. <laughs> There's a point where Marines and Medivacs are a little too strong. And, uh, he, but he it, was, it, it was entertaining, man. Like, the amount of Nidus worms that he made in that yeah. game. That was crazy, <laughs> man. Make from him, like, I don't know about this. And then eventually it works. It's like, what? Like, yeah, man. I thought that game was completely over. I'm like, if, oh, I found the Nidus. Just fucking leave you now. You saw three but, Niduses. Normally you just win, yeah. but, like... Yeah. Nidus number seven, man. That's the that's the, that's the cash money one right there. Didn't he have like four in his opening attack? How many did he have in that opening Roachling attack? At least, like I don't yeah. know, but it was it was a lot of Nidus's. Like yeah. right. I think it was number four or five that actually started to do damage. Yeah, mm. it. He's such a loose player, man. He just doesn't true? give a fuck. Anybody. Yeah, dude, he, just he plays so aggressive. It's like a crazy person. He's dangerous. Time time again. He is dangerous. He's, he's like. He might not win GSL with it, but he's going to kill some yeah. people with that shit, man. No, exactly. He's never going to win GSL, but I tell you what, if I was in Pro League, I'd want that guy in my team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's man. true. Not for yeah. times 100. Uh, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's the kind of player that doesn't often lose to worse players than, than him, but you know, might get outsmarted kind of easily uh, by yeah. players. Oh, they just stay safe and they're like, oh, he old end again. I held it there, yeah. so it's all okay. good. <laughs> um... I, I think True Fantasy probably, if you're going to watch a best of three from last night, would be the best one to watch in terms of entertainment value. I'm trying yeah, to think. Yeah. Uh, Losira True was the first match was just pretty good. Cheese it was fest, all right. Man. Yeah. So lots of uh, fast killing sort of stuff, temples and whatnot. Yeah. Um, the fifth match, the rematch of those two, is not worth your time. Yeah. Really bad. Was that the one where uh, he just basically hit a baneling hit on a nat like at the natural with on all those drones and Ling just cleaned up and won? Yeah, yeah, that was okay. sad. He likes he stacked them all in the one mineral. Yeah, match. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Tasia Fantasy also was really good. A any match that Fantasy played in last night was just fun to watch. He's like, really good at dropping. So sick. Man. Yeah, his control was in, in like. I would be raging if he was dropping those hellbats <laughs> in my drone line, man. I'd be like, fuck this game. Fuck <laughs> Vinnyvax, man. I'd quit. <laughs> Bad out of the shit out of him or something. Uh, yeah. No, the, was it the first game where he had like... He killed like 80 SCV... Or, yeah, 80 100, SCVs? Was, was it 100? He over 100. He killed over 100. <laughs> yeah. And then True killed over 100 of his SCVs. Like, yeah, Cats right, feels man. really bad that he hasn't seen this yet. You can see he's like, yeah. oh, damn, I screwed up. Like, I should have been yeah. up at 5 a.m. or whatever. That was uh, that was really good. I didn't watch the night prior where uh, SOS and Sue qualified through. Was that night pretty good, Dan? Uh, actually, out of all the four nights we've done so far, that was the weakest. It was still good, but it <clears throat> all three other nights I thought were better, more entertaining. Yeah, I agree. Ooh, Marine, Marine King went 2-1. Or one and two and zero oh and two were his matches just not very stellar. Um, yeah, he didn't really he didn't put out like you'd think he would, but it's it's a tough group, man. And SOS is like, I love that guy. Curious beat ranking prime, right? He like smashed him. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, he beat him. It's like just like really nice ZBT, like just straight up. It was like really impressive. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, he was actually a. Uh, 
It's really he impressive. was one of the more impressive Zergs, actually. Like I, I remember I likened him to life a little bit, I believe, mm. because he was like doing really well with aggression while still like so much Zerg keeping up economy point. and stuff. Like it was just like yeah. a really nice balance and like you could see that he gets all of life's replays and like gets to talk. Okay, to I feel all like the time. if there was like one more turn in the in like the groups, he could have like gone through because his CVT yeah. was a sick man. But yeah. yeah. Well, everyone's still waiting for group F. Uh, to happen like that's I think that's going to be the most probably hype leading up to it the amount of hype yeah, leading into it it's probably just going to be a terrible group like it's all going to be a bunch of two O's <laughs> this next group is going to be pretty sick actually like yeah they're all pretty all good from here groups, on out man. yeah group G you kidding me You're yeah talking about group F when there's group G yeah Ugh. that's true yeah it's, these are just this is just greatness. I, Lena, what the hell wow that's gonna be sick man yeah. yeah. That's Parting, waiting for them. I, I personally think Group F would be would be the Group G in a clan war, though. Mm. I don't know. Though. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's got innovation <laughs> and yeah, yeah, and Gumio yeah. and Hyun. Come yeah. on. And it is yeah. Okay. Group. That's definitely gonna. Probably win. the strongest players for sure, but yeah. but life would probably just throw Actually, them somehow. Group H. Yeah. Swap. I'm sorry to say this, but swap. Uh, boom, 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 boom for someone in Group. You know, in one of the other two groups, and that's the fucking sickest group. So like Maru, Maru Prime, Prime has been running, uh, like he's been doing so well since the beta. What has he done? I'm trying to think. He's he's just like fucking wrecking. He had like the best stats on ladder ever, and he was like top oh, really? of the Korean ladder as well. Yeah, he's. That's what happens yeah. when you're a little kid, man. Little kids yeah. learn too quick. And he's a little kid, man. Yeah. Us he old is. folks, man. Uh, <laughs> we're we're <laughs> delegated to talking so. about the game up show. Exactly. Exactly. Hope he wins GSL, so I can um, be like, I lost to him, two one to him. I <laughs> wow, I lost <laughs> two zero to him. <laughs> um, I got two zero. There was an interesting, uh, not so much a storyline, maybe just a stat. Uh, prior to last night, uh, what is it? Four out of the six qualified were Kespa players. I think that's right. Bomber and Yoda being the only two non-Kespa players to qualify. But then uh, Teja and Lucira kind of stuck it to true in fantasy last night. So it's good to see that the Kespa players aren't 100% taking over yet. But uh, no. we'll, we'll see what happens in the well, they're, round of 16. Yeah. They're starting to realize, I think, the SF teams that they need to change their stuff up a little bit. Like, yeah. Just, it's, it's just so obvious. Like, literally, it was so telling when you saw that, like, in game two of Fantasy True, he made a siege tank. It's like, okay, look at that. He changed his build order because of the players <laughs> playing. That's, yeah. thank you. This is what having a good coach and a good mindset for the match is. <laughs> yeah. 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 For instance, like teams like MVP, like they're so talented, and then they're, you know, they're they're basically guided by um, the RG. I mean, Coach Choi is fucking awesome, but he doesn't know much about the game. Um, <laughs> so, it, like, yeah, that needs to start changing. Like, so. Because the talent's there in ESF, and I and, and I don't think they're behind at all. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they, they I think they have everything in yeah, place. Yeah, they're not behind just, right yeah. now, but tweak, but tweak a thing or two and, and keep up. Certainly. Mm. Yeah. What the hell? Uh, they just need the added structure. Like that's that's what's really important. Because the more games that everyone plays, the more they're going to get studied by Kespa. And if they don't do the same, then. Hey, they're screwed, but they will. They will. It's not like everyone knows this. So most of them are ex pros from StarCraft One that have just kind of been taken it easy because not that many pros switched over. So, yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah, stepping that's up. That's how it felt. It's and, yeah, when 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 uh, when 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 uh, shit the bleh, Kespa came in, <laughs> it was it was fun to it was fun to watch uh, how they kind of sucked at the start in terms of build orders, but at the same time they were like doing their own build orders and they were like you know what you guys are fucking wrong everyone's fucking wrong like we we will we'll teach you how to play this game it's we how see, it like the old me. meta like from the start of yeah. like when we started playing it's like oh they're doing this again like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This doesn't work, man. That's, that's how it felt but but that's but that's that's how you should think of as a player and not just like you know copy copy other people yeah. so I, that that made me so very happy and and yeah, i yeah. think it was a little bit of a slap in the face to to you know everyone else it was like we're here to change the way things work and, and the way like the metagame works. And of course they will. They will. 
if they true. had been playing from Wings of Liberty, man, no one would have gone bio even one time, TBT. That shit would have been put to an end right in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You think so? For fucking sure. I would bet my life on it, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that they didn't because then it would have been really okay. fucking boring. I don't know about I don't know about Heart of the Storm yet, but like Wings of Liberty, man, that was that, that would have been different. <laughs> oh man, some other tournaments going on. We got uh, unless are we are we good on uh, Code S? It was we got Code A on? yesterday. Code S is killing it. Code yeah, S is doing Kodak good. Qualifiers. Yeah. Oh yeah, the qualifiers. That's right. Where's the yeah. list of that? Where's the list? Let's uh, let's bring that up. It's I totally like forgot about that. Dan, why, while I'm bringing this up, why don't you talk about your Code A qualifier <laughs> experience? Oh, it was. <laughs> Bad. I was actually really butthurt with myself. I played like the. I looked like I was in gold league. Like it was. I just. I. I don't know. I was like nervous or something because like I've gotten a lot better recently because I've been able to play a lot thanks to my awesome sponsor TT Esports. But uh. Boom. But, yeah, good plug right there. Um, no, I I've gotten a lot better. I'd never ex I expected zero two, but I expected to not look like I was a the easy computer you know it was <laughs> it was embarrassing like, i was not moving fast you I beat your first playing. round opponent but then you lost to top right i there was no first round opponent it was a bye jake oh i got a bye okay see i didn't even follow it so no, i guess no, i'm a dick like, here but well. it was bad no one watched the pods it's like literally it, i watched it live man i was just cheering kidding. for you if i may Thanks. just uh legitimize what you just said down for a second uh you're huh? probably the best uh the best player as a caster right now. Um, mm. I, was, yeah. I love cats. Um, I, I <laughs> like Retort might be uh, a close second, but like Succeed was telling me, um, you know, he plays on Korea server. He's like, Ortosis's points in MMR is actually just as high as most foreigners. You know, most of the foreigners that actually play or try to play professionally uh, playing in the Korea server right now. So. That's quite impressive. There you go. There you go. The circle jerk returns. Let's take a look at the qualifying right. fighters. Here. You well, a lot of people say a lot of things. And, you know, like, like a lot of a lot of people over time say a lot of things, and like you know, I get better. I get better, and mm. I did this and that, and 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 there's little way to confirm it as far as casters go. So I I thought I. It's true. Artos is a pretty fucking good player. Yeah. There you go. It's a good thing to have, man. Be good at. Gain the cost. <laughs> there you go. Well, cats, let's have you, Circle Jerk, one of your own players now. Yu-Gi-Oh qualify. <laughs> You're very. Yeah, we have the link. Can I can I see the link of who? Uh... uh, yeah, I'll send it to you here. Where's my mouse? I'll put it in the chat. Uh, so some other big names here. Uh, Supernova, kind of returning back. Jongbi coming back for Protosses. I mean. If you Protoss. look at, do what? For Protoss. <laughs> Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jangby's boss. Okay, so these are all the players that qualified through the Code A qualifiers? Yep. Okay. The crazy thing is, like, there's not a player in here that's, like, that couldn't be fucking top of, like, Code A, probably. Like, they're all... Well, who, I don't know who yeah. Swim is still. I think they casted a couple of his games, actually. Like, was he over in Taiwan or something? I'm not even... I don't know. Oh. Actually, he's the even, only one that I don't know. Crazier, crazier thing, and I don't think many people have spoken about this, is the fact that um, the qualifiers were, were kind of, like, empty. Like, Yu-Gi-Oh, like, I'm super fucking happy he qualified, and, and I think he deserved it, because he beat MVP SC 2-1, and SC is playing really good right now. But, uh, but that's all he beat. That, I don't think he played anyone else. Mm. Really? Oh. Uh -huh. So there were that? So? I figured, because, Dan, you, I mean, how many people were there, Dan? Well, were there a lot of people around? The, the problem with that is uh, people sign up ahead of time, and they oh, set your so. times, and then, like, a ton of people sign up, like, every single time, and then don't show up. Uh, so that's, like, some of the brackets will be really full. Like, uh, the time I was there, the place was fucking packed, like, early in the morning. And then, yeah, I actually, I stopped by later on. It was, like, kind of empty. And it's like, oh, shit, like, just a lot of people didn't show up. And as far as I know, like, all the pro gamers in Korea did show up. So it's maybe just, like, a lot of amateurs that didn't show or something. But um, this list, man, is pretty awesome. Pretty crazy, right? Like, 
And I do have to say once again, the fact that Yu-Gi-Oh had the option of doing the other one and decide to stay and qualify, that's ballsy as hell because Yu-Gi-Oh is like coming off more and more as an angry badass. I feel bad for like laughing about his name way back in season one with John. But like, <laughs> but like at, ever since that match against that last Slayers match where like he did look angry and like Wolf and Keller, like he looks fucking pissed and then he killed all those nerds and like, and nowadays he's like, no, I'm going to fucking do Korea. And it's like, well, Katz is like, Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh, like we might get a team house. America's going to be easier for you. You have American teams. He's like, no, no. And then he qualifies and it's like, whoa, that's, Mm, that's, that's pretty cool though. That's that's a good story right there. I hope that he goes far. But um, he's he's, he's, really well too. he's got a lot of personality to him. I'll say that I mean, he is he is angry all the time, even even jokingly. <laughs> he is like, really. This isn't just <laughs> yeah, man. Reality. He fucking yeah. swears more than anyone. It's like shibal, shibal, and the fucking <laughs> like he types it a lot too. And he's like, when when do we play the next clan where I need to be? Oh oh, last quote was like. I need to be fucking angry. No sleep. <laughs> no oh, sleep. Crap, okay. <laughs> Didn't know that was a requirement for you to perform better. That's uh, insane. But uh, yeah, he he says shit like that. That's just really fucking funny at times. Like, right? and he's always he's always wanted to uh, put a show for the fans. I don't know if you watched the Calder video uh, of him playing the the qualifier match against. That was the qualifier match against FXOSE, and. Uh, you know, he had the game won, so he just, like, leans back on his chair and starts, like, playing, like, his board. <laughs> like, <laughs> hand up the keyboard and shit. You know, he, he's awesome. a great personality. That's I good. Love you, you know, they need yeah, that in, in Korea. He'll do well if he, uh, if he goes far. A few, few other things about the, because uh, that, that's pretty cool. A uh, few things about, like, the qualified player list. Mm -hmm. I love to see players that have been doing well in other things actually get through. Like who? Because it's such a crapshoot at times. But, like, for instance... Super from MVP. Uh, what was his ID before? Vampire? Or... Vampire, man. No. Yeah. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, okay. No, he did so well in uh, GSL, GSL, right? He got that all killed, all didn't kill, he? man. Yeah, and here he is. He gets through sick. Really good. Did, like a fly kick uh, or some shit at the end? Yeah, yeah, that? he did. He did like some ninja kick. That was That's crazy. Awesome, man. No, he's a ninja too. This is just like, ooh, this That's guy's good. gotta vampire watch out for him. Ninja man, it's like the a West vampire ninja. ninja, a super vampire ninja. Super vampire. Look at all that all kills teams. Like, also sound. Uh, great to see him getting through. Because oh, didn't he just do an all kill? Yeah, and he's yeah. and he got he's through. Really impressive. You get uh, Calder did a first person view of him too, and it was really entertaining. <clears throat> Big shout out uh, to Caldor, that, Yeah, dude, Caldor championed uh, the qualifiers here, man. He had if if you guys want coverage, go over to youtube.com slash Caldor TV. Uh, he has a ton of different He's a work. He's got a man. ton of shit over there. I don't understand how like All he does. I don't he's understand. And yeah. I, well, I I show him how to lift weights a little bit too, but like <laughs> Starcraft mostly. Um, <laughs> that guy just doesn't sleep, and I know because he's told me he's like, yeah, I sleep like four hours a night. I'm like, yeah, you're kind of crazy. <laughs> I don't understand that. Um, Dan, in terms of the Kespa players that qualified, are there any big standout names that maybe don't seem that standout to certain um, people? They don't know I the mean, names. I mean, uh, I mean, Juni, really good. Yeah. Um, Hiva, Hiva. I remember six, him being six, blown up uh, when he was playing in MLG last year. He's really he, like he got rookie of the year in StarCraft One, which is like an insane thing to get, because uh, obviously there's only one rookie of the year, and like so he's each he's year like, really. That's how it works. I know <laughs> uh, each year there's exactly one. Uh, okay. Um, let me see. Let me see. I like that uh, Incredible Miracle now has four more players. Obviously, Zhang Bi is top yeah. six brute of all time. Huh? I was just I was just saying that I am got four more players in now. Yeah, they're just hey, first. JP, nice fucking douchebag. What? You banned it, my name from your chat. Yeah, yeah, no, it's banned. Cat. It's banned. Why? Because <laughs> I got tired of people saying cats should be on roleplay, so I just banned your name. <laughs> <laughs> <That's great. laughs> I don't want. I don't want to see that shit, man. The greatest reason ever. It's the greatest reason ever, man. You know what? Soon they're gonna the the Papa John's Twitter is gonna filter out root cats like exactly. Just, That's how you do it right there. Uh, yeah. You're just gonna be blocked off there. That's gonna be it. <laughs> yeah. um, it's nice, by the way, to see the Azubu team doing really well. Three guys getting in. Yeah, that's true. Vine, Sun, Supernova, yeah. 
when a new team comes in and like spends a bunch of money to get a bunch of players and stuff, and then they start doing well immediately. That's always really nice because it's like, all right, they aren't going to regret this. You know, they're going to be like, oh, we did pick up sick good players. So yeah, yeah. apparently nice. Seed was the only IM guy that didn't make it through losing really? round one with some Protoss. Oh, oh man, oh, of all the IM players that qualified, I figured he would be the sh the shoe in. Yeah, man. GSL, GSL, yeah. pretty crazy. Doesn't mean shit. Bad. In code A. Um, I f what was the? Did, did any of you watch the Ragnarok video that people were splooging about on Reddit about how just fast he plays? No, I didn't. I didn't see no. that. Did not. Ragnarok's pretty young too, right? Uh, I, I actually know do that, but he probably is. I wonder if. Oh my God! I just saw that. Uh, scrolling down and see Deezer has officially become a League of Legends player. Let's not talk about that, but that's <laughs> a worthy mention. God damn it! Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't find them. Maybe Caldor linked the VOD. Uh, oh, here's the Ragnarok video. There you go. Caldor is so fast. I'll just show this real quick because apparently he was playing like super fast. Um, and we can continue talk about thing, talking about this while it goes on. So, um, overall, I think the, the players that qualified were kind of names that people expected to see there. And uh, when, when's the next qualifier, Dan? It's, it's for a while away, right? It's a couple months. Yeah, it is. Oh. Yeah, I would say it's probably at least two months I would say but I, I don't have the date so I can't I can't say for certain and when does uh, code a start do you know is that next week or a couple weeks I, I it's after the round of 32 I believe so probably right around the same time as dreamhack something like that okay so end of April I, maybe I that's that's a guess on my part that's normally how so, it goes. and then just because I it's WCS and no one really knows all this by heart when does when does OGN start their broadcast is it after code s is over is that how it works, Dan? Uh, wait for the OGN. Are you saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when don't they? Because you guys trade off the different yeah, seasons, like, right? So they start when have, you guys are finished. It's, it's yeah. GSL goes on now, and then OSL is next, and then GSL is after that. Okay. All and right. they don't overlap at all. Oh. oh okay. Sorry, Caldor was messaging me. Um, well, other than that, I, I think, uh, like I said, go check out Calder TV on YouTube. That's where this video is currently from that I'm playing. Uh, he has a lot more stuff on there. I believe all of the matches that him and Wolf casted from the qualifiers are on there as well. Yeah. Uh, Skip mine versus top, though. That is, oh, my God. <laughs> especially watch Artosis versus top. I'll link to it in the comments. No! <laughs> you should go check that out. Um, uh, one more thing to talk about, then we'll get to some balance talk. DreamHack has announced their player base as well as their map pool. Um, I'll go ahead and bring... I guess I need to link this to you guys as well. Oh, I really want to talk about this, actually. This is the coolest thing ever. All right, this, go ahead and talk I, about it. I'm not sure if the map pool didn't load all the way, or right, they're the they're only four maps. fucking tournament ever. But there, there's only four maps? Yeah. Or five maps, sorry. Really? No, there's five? Uh, Aklon Waste, Bellshare Vestige, Neoplanet S, GSL Star Station, and Whirlwind LE. Oh, because the, the map pool right here doesn't have, on the actual page, it does not have Whirlwind. Really? I just here. reloaded Let it. Let me link this. Let me link are, this. I'm, I'm looking at it on... Yeah, yeah, that's where I'm looking right now. Refresh. Okay. Oh, maybe... It, okay, because I was making the joke that maybe this didn't load. Okay, there it is now. It just... The JPEG didn't load. Damn. I thought it was four maps, which is like... When you have four maps and like you get to do a choose type thing, I, I don't know. That's the format I grew up on with WCG and stuff. Well, and that's like the one that you and practice those maps. Holy shit! Like you know those maps perfectly, and it is so much. Isn't fun. that what you and my maps is good? You and Tyler spoke about that, I believe, on a past state of the game, where like more tournaments need to try that out, right? That was yeah. this is what you guys it's, were referencing. This is actually five maps is a great start. Best of three, both players can just eliminate one. Yeah. And if you can eliminate one, you have four maps to practice in every matchup. And you might be different in each matchup. And it's like, it helps your training so exponentially much as opposed to these stupid map pools of nine maps or something where it's like, well, fuck, I don't even know what this map <laughs> looks like and I'm playing in this yeah. tournament, you know? 
another yeah, la la another much. good thing, even even if there's this ladder to some extent in Bridward that that this has is that this is actually a ladder map pool, so you can actually train. Mm -hmm. You know, you can actually veto the same maps that you would. You know, you don't have to play in the tournament on ladder, and play that alone. Mm -hmm. Kind of like yeah. In fact, you know, the, the ladder map pool is how many maps is it? It's it's uh nine. No nine, isn't it? Nine maps in the ladder. Nine veto right? three, I think that's how it is. And you could veto like three, that, and that so means only one of the eight. maps you're hitting is a map that you're not going to play on at all, which is yeah. that's pretty cool. That's yeah, that what a good cool. way to train that is, man. The more this lines up, like the ladder pool versus the small maps, and I think it's good. What do you think, Moonglade, being the awesome player that you are about the smaller map pool? Oh yeah, I think it's great, and I think it's great if Blizzard keeps up to date with all the ladder map. Uh, sorry, the tournament maps. If they keep putting it on ladder, it helps everyone so much, like unbelievable. And I think it like, doesn't yeah, it true. make esports more relatable too. Like if you're a oh one hundred percent, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, even if Absolutely. you play, computer, you don't you don't oh, tune in and this. what was that fucking yeah. map that they used in Caspo with all the rocks? Arkanoid? Is that it? Arkanoid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't tune in and like see Arkanoid and just be like. What in the fuck? <laughs> I don't even understand yeah. how this map works. Yeah, yeah. The thing about Arkanoid and about like Pro League in general is you can have maps that are completely broken in one matchup because you don't ever have to send a player that plays that race to play in it. So it's not the same for for tournaments. And I know that's yeah. a point aside to what you were saying, actually, JB. No, 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 no it's, it's a, a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah, good thing to say. It, it is the case. And actually, one of my favorite things to see happen in Pro League is when the map balance shifts during the season. Like, uh, what was the name of that, that desert map that was only PvPs and then turned into a Zerg map? What was the name uh, of that? I remember that map. Yeah, Chaldeum, cool. Chaldeum. By the end, they were actually throwing that's, Zergs that's on That's the map. one JP was talking about, right? Mm -hmm. the, the one with the No, rocks. he was talking about Arkanoid. He was talking about Arkanoid, the oh. one with all the rocks, Arkanoid the desert map. Fire map. You know, the Brood War map that sucked and sucked in StarCraft 2 as well. The Reaper map. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways. Confused. But yeah, no, this map cool. cats. <laughs> sickest props to DreamHack for having five maps. Like, like I'm it. actually going to uh, change my thumbs system so that I play on uh, make sure I'm hitting these maps a lot so I can even commentate it better. This is like good for everybody. It's good. Nice. That's really good, man. Nice. And uh, the player list let's just switch, so, switch over here is like, fucking incredible. Like, yeah, it is. They could have not, like, let's just be honest here. DreamHack is now, without a doubt, the number one non-partnered with Blizzard tournament in the world. Like they, yeah. <laughs> this is was, that, this was is... that between DreamHack and NASL? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like as far, <laughs> I'm more excited for this tournament than I think I am for probably any of the WCS right now in like the round of 32. Regardless of seeing the brackets, sure. like. Well, look it's just it. incredible, dude. Watch, it's fucking insane. Watch the shit out of DreamHack, yeah. Fucking insane, oh, no. dude. I'm gonna cast this shit. Even Coco is going. What the hell? Yeah, dude. Coco's going. Coco's going, man. Coco. Sick. Six. Six. So sick. I can't even man. like read through all of the the. Uh, what teams are Coco and Puzzle with? I have no <laughs> idea. I doesn't even have a team for him next to his. Are they going to Dreamhack? Then what the? They're low money, man. Maybe so. Maybe no, so. this oh, is. Tickets. In, this is awesome, man. Tickets from Korea weren't actually that expensive at all. I think that's why we're seeing a lot of Koreans go as opposed to past DreamHacks as well. It just happens um, to be like Do you think DreamHack is helping any of the, uh, the players out getting over there or no? Not mine, I so. Yeah. I would hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Like, ah, uh, fuck cats. You can get them over there. But the rest of these guys, <laughs> the rest of these guys, like, uh, I, I mean, just look at this. I, I can't pick out a singular name. Like, they're all just fucking, it's a sick tournament. I, I don't think the bracket's released yet. And you know what? The, or the, group, uh, the sorry. race distribution isn't that bad when you consider how few t top and Terrans Europe uh, really has. You know, like because Terran is really the race of Korea more than Europe or North America. So like, yeah, I'm not surprised to see like eight less Terrans than Protosses. Yeah, we're seeing but more Terrans not... like do better though outside of. Uh, yeah, no, they're definitely kidding. they're definitely improving, but historically speaking. So, apparently uh, Coca and Puzzle are being sent by a community project uh, that started on mm. TL. So, that's, oh, wow. that's cool. pretty fucking cool. Um, yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. I'm trying to get a link to confirm that, but uh, the, the Dark Horse Project, I think is what it was called. Hopefully oh, it's, oh, all right. someone sends that. But. I wonder if they're awesome again, because they were so good when they quit. 
Dude, I was so Puzzle sad that Coco so... quit for long. No, I was, he was. I was all about Coco and Puzzle Man. Like Big I use build Puzzle is using like two years ago in PVZ right now. Like that's actually yeah. true. <laughs> Are they really good with the core, but anyways. They're not running a. Uh, there's no open portion of this, right? Because this is not the main dream hack. It's not like the land dream hack. It's actually just a tournament, right? Uh, yeah, 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 I'm pretty it's, sure everyone's on even grounds, which is great. Okay, it's cool. a great incentive to for teams to send players there. You know, it's not like yeah. cool. any sort of disadvantage. Yeah, yeah I it's mean, that, like three group stage one where you just group, 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 and then you know, out, which makes the like That's the what, first group set some they normally like seed a little bit or try to I think. Yeah, I, think I don't know if they actually like. Sorry, I'm I'm looking at this Project Dark Horse website. It's kind of interesting. Apparently, it's just like a website that sends tur players to tournaments. Really? It's a non-profit That's organization that auctions and distributes donated programming team apparel, memorabilia, and related items to raise funds in support of new programming talent. Oh, this is what Slayers... Oh, okay. So this is wow. what Slayers, Jessica, and all them gave all of their memorabilia to. Oh, okay. And so that's the cool, money dude. that's being bid on that stuff is to fund players to go to other... That's fucking cool, And those man. are those are ex-Slayers players, so... Yeah. Oh, that's that's kind of cool. nice. That's pretty cool, man. Nice. Yeah, let them let them remake their names now that they're back and... You know, and uh, maybe get pick up a sponsor because because of this. This... That, yeah. That's a good organization. I like that. It's good. You know what? That's that type of thing. If there was more stuff like that, that can help players that uh, we were talking about earlier that need Absolutely. to help breaking out stuff like that. Yep, that'd be a huge help, man. Yeah. So I'm reading. People need to stop messaging me on this guy because I just start reading this shit. Apparently, they had uh, 150 plus people apply to go, but they only had 96 slots. Um, so I don't know how they were decided on that, but. It's interesting. It's interesting nonetheless. So uh, that's DreamHack. That we still have a little bit till that tournament uh, happens. That's at the, I think it's the last weekend of April. Um, so once the groups comes out, we'll probably have a full-on preview of that tournament. Should be a lot of fun. But let's do some balance talk here to close out the show. Uh, what, what's going on in the world of balance, guys? I mean, Moonglade, are you feeling a little bit more better now about Zerg? I'm feeling better, man. I'm feeling better. I've been laddering a lot, practicing a lot. I feel better about ZVT. Uh, ZVP can still be tricky if it gets to that stage, but I've definitely been focusing more on not letting it get to the airtel stage a great deal more. And I've been using, using muters a lot more, man. And muters are so fun in ZVP. <laughs> I take it to the next level, too, because they go like, like okay, let's go on muters. I've got the perfect counter. They go to the two Stargate Phoenix with range. I'm like, fuck you, man. 24 Corruptors with my muters, and I... I actually. Win. That's actually that can be hard to play against. I've hit it's those. It's really people. hard, man. Especially if you. In fact, I think T Gun did that to me, and I thought I was gonna <laughs> win, and then he beat me. And I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, yeah, man. It's just it's, sorry. Yeah. It's just, it just takes a lot of good control. I mean, it's like a control war, like uh, pushing the Phoenix away from your muters with your corruptors while your muters like targeting down an Nexus or something, and it's just like, yeah. Yeah, it works, man. That's I've won cool, some man. games I shouldn't have won with that sort of style. Did you uh, see a uh, DRG versus uh, that Muta game? DRG versus flying. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of cool. It was cool, but I th yeah, yeah, he kind of kind of made it cool, painful huh? at the same time. It's like <laughs> I do feel like you need to transition at the end. It's like all right, he's kind of like hard counted the shit out of my mutas. It's time to go like twenty swarm hosts and start pushing and I, sort, sort yeah, of thing. Um, he didn't really do that, but. Uh, he he actually seems to have this mindset where he, he goes for like these tier just just a tier two and just masses muters and lings against like Terran and Protoss to the point where he dies. I'm just like, man, come on, do something else. Move move on yeah. from that. The RG does have a few things in his head. Cats yeah, but um, <laughs> Cats totally <laughs> Cats is totally not listening to us at all right now. <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, but okay. uh, it's it's. I feel like it's getting better. Zerg's figuring it out more. Um, example, perfect example is the Code A qualifiers, man. Like, more, uh, Zerg's qualified more than any other race, and um, Code S were doing all right. It's it's just yeah. been taking some time to figure it out, and um, still everyone says that like Mass Voids is just retarded. But uh, I'm Mass sure Voids? 
Yeah, man. I don't think mass voids is that good. I don't think well, I don't think CVP. I think CVP, if anything, might slightly favor Zerg, but it's it's hard to yeah. tell. Um, well, I know you got the the start I, with the spores. The well, that's on map split map right. only, though. That's on split yeah, map yeah, yeah. only that it works. So it only works on a certain on a, on I a really, certain few maps. I really like that we're seeing more and more swarm host play. Uh, at least in my latter games, I've been seeing more and more swarm hosts, and it's really cool. Like. Yeah. Um, just because I really do think that that is like the such a big part of the future of the matchup, and like I don't know, it's, I it's just really, it's really it's really cool now, happy. and yeah, it, I mean, it makes me happy as a Cirque player, but I think it it has the potential to become really boring. Um, it could. And it I, could I'm actually. kind of scared for that. Um, it's very true. As far yeah, as split true. map goes, it can be boring. It, I don't think it's. As boring as as uh, Bird Lord and Fester, and there's always no, like something to talk so. about. Um, so yeah. it's definitely much better, even in the long run. But I think it's headed to like if you know, like I, I think it's headed in that direction. If if I think it's gonna be much better, anyways. And there should be a lot of shit going on, anyways, at all times. Because storm hosts are like shit going on, no matter what, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like hey, there's, there's lasers going out, or they're dying. So. <laughs> Um, yeah. And as far as um, imagine that that half map scenario of trying to cast that, it's like, and he's killing all the locusts, and then like <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's killing all the locusts. Oh, he lost yeah. his life finally. <laughs> that's I mean that's kind of what it's gonna be until like I think I think that's gonna be like the 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 gist of it until until people start start like adding more to it like you know like after they figure out that style and, and add more to it kind of like drops and shit like that on top of everything else. Mm. Uh, yeah, as far as CVT goes, I, I, I don't. I, I think Terran is stronger than Zerg. Um, still, I, I don't think. I don't think it's it's uh, the worst thing ever, though. Um, I don't know. I personally have been working more on uh, Roach Hydro compositions with Infestors and Swarm Hosts, like I said. Um, but I don't know. Mutiling Baneling seems um, seems like a fucking pain in the ass to go up against uh, Bio Bio Mines, and I feel like. Uh, turns aren't using ghosts properly against um, Infestor Viper like based compositions yet. Yeah, you know what? I haven't really seen any of that at the pro level. I, like people are just not making ghosts against Zerg. Like even yeah, back yeah. when it was fifty Infestors walk around, it was so rare even in Code S to see a Terran make a ghost to EMP that. You know, so that is a but, good point. Yeah, right. Right now, I would say the 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 like. Like the meta game is in favor of Zerg, because, because you know Zerg has the, the lifestyle and uh, well that sounded weird. Zerg uh, has the life, Startail lifestyle, um, and a lot of them are, are le like you know applying early pressure with Ling Baneling and going all in off of like one one with Baneling speed. That's all very common, and I feel like Terrans don't know how to deal with that like too well yet. So mm -hmm. I think that's where where a lot of the a lot of the wins are coming, kind of like how how uh, yeah. Protoss was doing with the Immortal Lin, and that might last for a long time until you know life comes around and and says, "Hey, do this hydrogen." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I would I would love to see more uh, Roach Hydra Infestor uh, type of and uh, Swarm Host type of play in ZBT. Like I find that. Like incredibly entertaining to watch. I haven't seen yeah. it done super well very much, but uh, it's like it's two very strong armies, and it's not like a it's not death ball-y, though, which is kind of cool because well, it's a little bit death ball-y, but not really death ball-y. You know what I mean? Like it's I know actually you it's, it's very tactical. You need, yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You, need you really have to you have to do the battle just right with uh, yeah. with Zerg to yeah. make it work. There's no fucking up, and and. And at the same time, it's it's it, it, it you know then then turns will have to like snipe this or or EMP these units or you know position their shit properly as well as spreads. I, I I mean it it all helps. It's 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 a nice battle we get out of it. So the only the only like, problem I have with it is mobility. So do you, yeah, like, do you feel like uh, Terrans really take advantage of you by like mass dropping like constantly? Well, yeah, but I'm trying just... to figure out, figure that out. Like I usually have static defense in in my outside bases, and then uh, since I got six hotkeys for army now as opposed to three that I had before that we were talking about pre-show. Um, you know, I have I have a hotkey where I'm trying to learn to put a few, like, you know, four to five roaches, or I'm trying to figure out that, like, I figured out maybe 
two high res one roach and like a bailing or two would be perfect to just run around deflecting medevacs. Um, mm. to, you know, just to have like that army set mm. aside for that sort of cool. purpose. I like that. So yeah, that's yeah. yeah, that's that's where I'm at right now. I'm trying to figure out how to not die to uh, you know, medevacs. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's the trickiest thing, man. Especially with <laughs> the muters. It's like, if I don't get muters, how am I going to deal with like 30 minutes of dropping? Is it, yeah. It's like, I, I've tried like like all kinds of like mutable builds, like Ling and Fester into Ultras kind of style, or, like anything like that. And if the Terrans see it, they're just like, all right, speed Manny backs everywhere, man. And mm. just sort of sit there and defend for like ever. It was actually, I, I thought that. um. Lucera's games last night really kind of underlined the the mid game scenarios of Zerg yeah. Terran very well. Where exactly. uh, when he went in Fester, Tasia dropped like crazy, and it was really difficult for him. And then when he went Muta, the the frontwards pushes uh, with all those Widow Mines were really like very messy, very difficult to deal with. So it's like it, those two scenarios are like oh, that's a little, little bit hard. Whereas which is another reason why the, the Roach Hydra type of play is really interesting to me because uh, it has it's better than Infestor to deal with drops and it's uh, better with Muta to fight uh, the incoming pushes, but it's not better than Muta to stop drops. It's not better than Infestor to stop the, the straightforward pushes. So it's like kind of this cool in-between build, which is also why I don't know if it's ever really going to work at the top pro level, but I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. I'm like. I'm like also switching in between uh, Roach Hydra into Infestor Viper and Roach Infestor into Hydra. You know, adding the Hydras later on. Um, I, I don't know. It, it all has advantages and disadvantages, like you mentioned. So it's. Mm. It's it's all kind of weird. But yeah, I, I really I really don't like, like when I see bio bio mines, I feel like it's really um, it's just really cost efficient, and the mines require like a minimum. Um, you know, micro really, and and they're, I don't know, like when when, the way I see it is when when I fungal like with my infestors, right? And I'm obviously this is not mutiling mainly anymore, but when I fungal a chunk of mines with my infestors, and and uh, you know I fungal five six mines, I'm like fuck yes, fuck yes, I kill them, you yeah. know. But when I fungal that same amount of roaches, I'm like ah oh, yeah that that that's cool, but it it's actually the same cost, <laughs> so it's you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, but it feels so much better to kill the mines, <laughs> right? Well, the mines yeah. increment out much slower because they come out of the factory, right? Like, Terran, generally speaking, is uh, never building more than three factory, mines I mean. at once. Reactor factory. Well, three mines at like, once is much different than 20 roaches like, at the same time, you know? Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. And also, roaches are like... Well, roaches just suck, guys. Let's just be real, okay? Roaches yeah, are not so actually a good unit. They're yeah, good yeah. because you can get a bunch and they have a bunch of hit points early on, but like... Like, yeah, mines are actually fight. dangerous. You don't look at Roach and be like, oh, shit! You know, it's not like that. Whereas with mines, it's like, you know, just suddenly you run into mines, you're like, oh, I guess I, I lose the game. They, they love, are very functionally different. Pretty I love much. the potential for that. I think it creates great, like, great excitement for the audience. Yeah. And, uh, you know, oh, it gives the casters, keeps the casters, like, gen genuinely excited for yeah. shit like that yeah. to happen. Oh yeah, you can always scream and the mine goes off. Like, oh, Except like, when there's mines burrowed dead. under a big clump of marines, and I'm like, "Well, it looks like Zerg's gonna win this," and everything explodes. I'm like, "Oh, I, I uh. yeah, there's soft counterplay yeah, to it. Like so you, wet. like with infestors, even if you know where the mines are, you can like, for example, fungal a clump of of bio units, then throw a few infested turrets their way. Not only do you get rid of the mine shots, but you also get rid of their army with their mines. Mm. Um, you can do that against all sorts of shit, like even later on against like clumps of ravens and shit like that, um, or just anything. You can throw infested terrans at it, and the mines will target the infested yeah. terrans, e the infested terran eggs, and kill their own army. That's pretty sick. I have I have like a, a little bit of a question because this is kind of an interesting shift I've noticed amongst uh, the GSL players, just obviously since uh, Codes started. Um, for a while there, people were using swarm hosts to set off. Uh, Widow Mines, like, late game. Just kind of, like, adding in, like, a Swarm Host or two. And I was like, oh, that's pretty neat. That's kind of cool. And then, you know, obviously Infestors with the Infested Terran Eggs have become kind of popular for that. But recently I've seen a lot of people making four Broodlords because they're, like, really mobile and, like, just using those for the mines. What do you guys think about that, that like, slight shift? Like, are you totally on board with making just a handful of Broodlords with, like, your mostly ground army? 
in a late game? Like, how do you, what do you think? I think it'd be helpful for sure if you can get there and you have the money to invest in it. Um, but like, is at, is that something you would do in a big econ type of game? I would. Is that if, your choice? If this Terran, if the Terran was going like mass by MMM, um, I would I would add some brutal of my ultra investors and stuff, and uh, just to force them to invest in Vikings and to push them back if I'm pushing like a planetary or some shit. Because that just ruins all all chances of mines hitting all your stuff. Yeah, it really mix, misses uh, mix, mixes it up. Uh, yeah, I've I've been adding uh, some Brutus uh, to the end game, if okay. if I find it to be viable and there's no Vikings on the map or anything, so I don't have to worry about them. Mm. Yeah, I think are. Kind of yeah, I, I agree with you. I I think I think Brutus are obviously a pretty good choice against mines. Like the heavier they are, the better. And it's basically like mines are kind of siege things, but at the mm. same time, I think that the Zerg end game is best as the sa the same exact thing as versus Protoss. It's just way more rare that you get there because you know bio and or Terran in general. Like and if you're going Mega Terran, you're doing it wrong because uh, like as far as I'm concerned, fucking Stormhost wreck Mech with like yeah. investors and they're a parasite. It's not even close. So mm -hmm. let's assume that everyone is playing bio for the time being or for the example. Yeah. Um, it's a lot harder than to get to the end game, like, and I mean end fucking game, you know, split map against uh, Terran than it is against Protoss because Bio is so mobile and you so 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 aggressive and and so fast to replenish in in comparison to Protoss armies that, or maybe not, but like you you know what I mean, not 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 gateway armies, but yeah, yeah. high tech armies. So yeah, um, I think the end game, if you can get there, is is best to just go. Stormhost, Infestor, Viper, um, and whatever else, and mass static yeah. defense. You, you can't lose against Terran either. But it's harder to get there than against Protoss. Hmm. Interesting. Some I saw you try and do it against me in a later game. You tried to go something similar. You went, I think you made Stormhost, you made Infestors, and you were making some static defense at 3 base in a ZVZ. And um, I was doing the standard meter kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, I've, I've I've been testing that in ZVC. It doesn't work as well. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, like, if they see it coming, I guess they can kind of take advantage of it if they got mass. I meters. think you denied my third. I was behind and I was yeah, behind yeah, otherwise. Right. I don't like playing muta from behind, so I just switched to investors. Because playing yes. muta from behind, I don't know why people even do that. Still, it's like no, it's, well that's so silly. It's like I'm yeah. gonna continue to make muta and hope that something happens. I hope that he forgets his mutas at home. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> I hope he missed hockey jumping and I can win an engagement. No, it doesn't work. Yeah, either. exactly. So, yeah, like once I'm behind a muta, I just switch to investors or, or something else. Like even if it's just mass lane counterattacks or something else. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. and that game, I, I fall behind. You killed my third, I think. So I was like, yeah, try and ship. Yeah. yeah. And about uh, PvP, I just want to throw out there because it is like a balanced discussion overall. Like, uh, well, I guess, you know, PvP's balanced, but uh, uh, <laughs> nowadays everyone can get an expand up, like, every game. Like, people have, the the one base type of play has basically been figured out. Um, yeah, it's basically like for the, the most part. Core? Uh, well, you know, it, not exactly. Like, the Mothership Core is definitely very helpful and, like, uh, well, that's definitely part of the reason why it's evolved like that, I guess. But what I'm trying to say is, like, when you start a new metagame, I feel like it starts at one base and builds to two. And other matchups go, like, really quick where it's like, well, of course Zerg's going to expand. But, like, in PvP, it kind of, like, if you're just quick expanding when the HOTS beta comes out, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. You're stupid. Like, this is, you know, figure out what one base all-ins there are so you can figure out how to expand and so on and so forth. That's, that's the way I look at it. I feel like it's a good way to build up understanding of a matchup like that. So, uh, I feel like nowadays, like, people know how to live through everything. There's, like, a bunch of builds that can get you into an expand reasonably well in PvP. So, like, I'm seeing a lot more expands overall, which is just, it, it's a little bit different from before, where there was, like, uh, I felt like there was a little bit more all-in-ish builds, and people weren't quite sure. Like, people would expand, I'd just go kill them with an attack, and I'd be like, I don't, I'm not really sure, like, what his build was, you know? Also, Nowadays, warping, like, in, warping in shit from the high ground, or to the high ground is impossible. That has to help, too, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Between that and uh, Mothership Core, and the fact that you can get detection off your Stargate, like, it's... Like, there are expansion builds now, is basically what I'm trying to say. Like, very legitimate expansion builds that people know how to do. So it's, like, changed that metagame a little bit, and that's fun. Yeah, it seems like, uh, like Linkstalkers and, and Stargates are pretty uh, 
pretty yeah, common now. Yeah, definitely. PvP looks There's a lot There's even of fun. some robo builds, to be honest. Some robo expands. Expanding I feel like, robo. Yeah, I feel like PvP turned more into the into the CVZ of, of uh, Wings of Liberty, where you have more options, as opposed yeah. to, you know, go Colossus or you're dead. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I really like the way PvP is shaping up. Yeah, it's like really cool. Right seeing Wings of Liberty was obviously better, I think. You yeah, you know, PvP like, is going to take a while to get there. It can be very unforgiving, so. I like it. I like it. And TVT. Actually, I'll give a little TVT update, too, since I'm with a couple Zergs. Um, yeah. uh, the Kespa players are fighting back with Mech. A lot of people were saying, like, we had the Ognis on, we were all kind of agreeing that Mech was, like, a little bit hard to do because of the speed medevacs, but... The Kespa players are kind of forcing Mech back in a little bit. And yeah, like Tasia with Bio uh, Tank beat Fantasy's Mech, but that was actually a very close series. It's a very good one that people really should check game. out. Yeah, yeah and uh, like for instance, uh, Fantasy played Flash on Aklon, I believe it was, in uh, the the match of uh, Pro League the other day, which I, I, I haven't caught up on all Pro League, but... We're starting to see uh, some mech TVT, and it's a little bit different from before. It's, like, really a lot of Hellbats because, like, before, you know, it was hard because of speed medevacs, and then, like, well, you have all these seed shanks, and what if they drop on them? But now if you just have a bunch of Hellbats, if they drop on you, you they die because the Hellbats kill everything that splash. So it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of funny, yeah, but no. it's, like, we'll see if it stays. I don't know. Yeah, I saw a game of uh, innovation against uh, reality. Where innovation went mech as well, and it was pretty good. And he went mech off of a proxy marauder um, oh, barracks cool. as well, which was kind of cool. So that that was that was nice. He, yeah, he he used a lot of hellions at the start, I guess, for you know to keep up in the mobility and on some to some extent. Yeah. And then he started getting tanks, and yeah, it, it seems it seems like mech should be plenty viable so far I, at I, least. It seems it. It seems it, it's uh, again. I think it's a little bit harder to execute like it was in Wings, um, and maybe even a little bit harder than it was in Wings right now because of the speed medevacs, but it, it might make a big resurgence. I'm not I'm not 100% sold one way or the other right now. I'm leaning mech because I'm biased towards it, but yeah. And yeah. Uh, PBT, it's about at the same spot, I would say. Like, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty good. People are greedy. People are trying to punish greed. The metagame's shifting slightly because of that. Stim timing, stuff like that. Do you get the third command? Immortal, you get quick stim. Immortal fucking breaks and shit. The mm. yeah, those are trying still to break shit and with uh still around a with a bit. time warp. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's uh no no complaints. I don't think on any side over there. I think the the new Zerg stuff coming out is actually the most exciting right now. I would say the the yeah, addition, so. yeah, the swarm host and stuff like that. Although ZVZ is, I don't shit. know. I'm not. I'm not liking it. the the way ZVZ is with the actual muta battles. You know. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, know. There's it seems a lot about just killing them, killing each other before the mutas get out. Uh, lost to yourselves that, anyway. It's just been like. That's that's like, good too. Like, if but that's but that's just metagame and it will shift out. Like when when mm. you're you know when you're abusing the fact that everyone's going muta by for example yeah link timings. Like that—that that will shift out. It's just a yeah. matter of, you know, oh, I like figured out how to builds. beat that. Yeah, Titan yeah. builds, and then yeah. the what I do think could be viable though um, is things like transitioning from Muta into Infestors, uh, while yeah. still keep making Muta. But like you have like six Infestors, you burrow them. I mean, who flies an Overseer with a block of Muta anyways? And if you you can pick it off, whatever. So. When you burrow them, and you don't burrow them when the muta fight is going to happen, or just like when you're in a good position, or if you attack a certain uh, place with your muta, and then their muta have to come defend, that's when you unburrow. Um, yeah. Then, then that, that gives you the extra... Like, if you're, if you're not burrowed, and the mutas are, like, can see your infestors, you can't ever fungal, right? But if you're actually burrowed, Think, think about it, like, and it's, don't think about it as a gimmick and, and be like, oh, you're hoping they fly into them. Like, they have no option. They, you can't, Cirque doesn't have detection like that. So, um, I think yeah, that's going to be a lot more viable. And, the, and the, 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 the thing is, in comparison to Wings of Liberty, right? Infestors are worse on paper, especially against Muta, because Mutas are faster and Fungal slower. Um, or, well, Fungal's not instant. Um, but, 
with spores being actually super strong, you can actually make the transition without, like Senio showed that really well in his last Pro League game, you can actually make the transition really or fairly easily with just one or two spores in place with, you know, in your expo to where you won't die if, if the other player identifies that you're making the transition. Does that yeah, make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that so a I game think, just like that happened on Daybreak. I don't know, in the last two nights. Yeah. Just so like I that. think I think that's that's really that's going to become pretty common. Um, and other than that, eh, I just I don't know. I'm working on builds where I have like timings and then transition into into infestors and mm -hmm. then hydras and then roaches. But if the if the if the timings don't do damage, it seems unlikely that will that will you know yeah ever become it's, a solid. There, there, there will eventually be a clean transition from mutas. There has to be, right? Because of fungal, like, when you're getting towards max, you just have to have a few investors in there. Like, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the I don't way know. To, I'm still, it's I'm still like, waiting for corruption to deal a little bit of splash damage to deal with void rays and, and mutas all at once. Still. Oh, man, that'd be <laughs> sick, man. Love that. We'll that would see. be pretty cool. We'll see. I would, I would like it. Like, I don't, I don't think void rays are as good as we made them out to be before. Um, They've been dealt but, with better in the past week or two, I would say. Yeah. People are definitely. making progress. Yeah, yeah. but but like like the, the problem that I have is that Corruptors are Zerg's anti-air unit and they don't seem to serve that purpose right now. So, oh, like yeah. think about <laughs> many, uh, like I, I can't think of many situations at all where I want to make Corruptors in any matchup. And that's kind of sad. Like corruptors, not birds, obviously. Yeah. And, and even birds, but corruptors. Like, tell me one situation you where you make corruptors. Like, like, only against battle cruisers or um, carriers. <laughs> yeah, That's only against battle cruisers, carriers, or tempests. I and, hope you're and, not hitting and, those too much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, it's cool. yeah, but it's it's pretty silly. Like, even against battle cruisers, if they have a lot of ravens, they're not the greatest, but they're kind of your only option. Unless, you, But by that time, you can split them up, too, against Terran, if they're doing that. And then against Protoss, like, even if they're going that, if they, they have enough risk, I, I'd rather do something else than get a shitload of corruptors, because they just fucking melt. Yeah, man, they're absolutely useless. Go Vipers for anything that isn't air. Or even yeah, if they are. Pretty it's useless. Like yeah, yeah, without air. I Like, there's something that I keep seeing... Cirques everywhere do and, and it pisses me so much <laughs> that they go corruptors against uh Colossus still when you have fucking yeah, well, anyone that does that. Terrible man. When Terrible. I see corruptors as Protoss now, I just actually take another base and make more cannons. Because you're gonna have to go into Brood Lords and I'm just gonna get ready for it. It's like <laughs> I don't know. I don't I don't think corruptors really have much of a place against Protoss anymore. Maybe it fighting like, against it's just because it's, the Viper is so much better against Colossus. Yeah, like we, yeah. we didn't have an option against Colossus. It's like okay, you make corruptors or you make corruptors. Now it's like <laughs> you can go Viper. It's cheaper if you have the infestation up already. It takes the exact same time to get a Viper out. So yeah. you know instead of making a Spire and fucking however much that costs, you you already go to Hive Tech, which opens a, a bunch of other possibilities on top of that. It costs you know let's say three Vipers. 600 gas versus how many however many corruptors you need to kill yeah. a fucking you know three colossi it's and it's and, not even guaranteed and the colossi do less dps against if, if protoss i'd rather have the hive anyways for you know adrenal you can ultras have some place and you know it's just yeah it's i agree completely like upgrades yeah. and i think yeah. i've seen people shift out a lot of uh going corruptors against any colossus tech that they see like i I think people are catching on overall. Yeah, man. I yeah. you never see me making a corruptor against Colossus unless I've like forgotten to go tier three and have a spy. <laughs> <or something. laughs> That's the only reason I yeah. make a corruptor. So overall, it seems like you guys are pretty happy with where we're at right now in the game. It's getting better. It's getting, yeah. it's, getting it's, better. it's evolving, and it's evolving at a, a fine pace that I think people can't really complain about too much. Like it's. Oh. Uh, we'll see if it hits a roadblock or not, but right now I'm pretty happy with the way I see things moving. Awesome. I, I, yeah, I, I never thought there was going to be an issue with uh, with CVP too much, and I thought it was going to revolve around the mid game. And I'm happy that we have late game options that we hadn't found before. Mm. Um, mm. I'm still of the idea that Terran properly played is better than Sergio. That's that, that's the only thing. But 
but it's much better than I thought it was. So. Cool. Well, we had some uh, breaking news hit while you guys were doing your little balance Uh-oh. discussion. Oh, um, good. Naniwa now has a new team. He's joined up with No Tide Hunter from Dota. Of course, what? they're probably the number one uh, number one Dota. North American slash EU squad. I think that was just rated actually uh, by the TL Power Rankings for Dota Two. And it's interesting because so he's joined this team called Alliance, right? Uh huh. Sponsored by Razer. It's got the same end domain as EG. We've seen Loda wearing Astro headsets in all of his interviews recently. <laughs> but EG's nowhere to be found. So I don't know if it's like EG sponsors apart from Razer didn't throw in money. So Razer was like, well, we'll just do our own team, but you guys can help it. Or if this is just like, well, I guess they'll just announce more sponsors as the team goes on. Like, I, the press release specifically states that, let's see... I want to get it right. Uh, no tighter. Have been using razor mice keyboards and mouse pads for quite some time now. There's more direct quote here from that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, being involved in the creation of a brand new professional gaming team of this caliber is a very special opportunity, and we're honored to have part of this creation process, said Ming Ling Tan, Razor co founder and CEO and creative director. So I don't know. Congratulations to both of the, the guys, but it just seems a little bit weird to like. Everyone thought it was going to be EG, right? But now, yeah. now it's a new team. Yeah. So yeah. you think, yeah, okay, I, I see what you're saying. I mean, and and I think, I think that Loda has always said that he. So no Tide Hunter for those that aren't aware are a all Swedish team, and it's something they're very proud of. And I think he said that he like wants to keep that with whatever team he joins. He wants it to be like a very Swedish dominated team kind if not like all swedes so sweet sweden's navi kind of huh? yeah yeah so maybe that's what it is i i don't it it just seems a little bit weird to me that like razor's involved but it's not on eg when i would figure that like you know, eg and uh, razor are like the biggest two or is the biggest sponsor of eg rather so why wouldn't they why wouldn't they just join eg um that's that's not that easy uh, though i mean players have always well, Razor sponsors like, a lot of teams. I mean, yeah, but. yeah, I guess that's. But why start a new one? I guess is what I'm getting at, right? Hmm. I mean, Razor isn't starting it. I'm sure they have their own backing, and Razor is the first sponsor. Yeah, um, yeah, that's true. Well, there's Something not much news on this to speak of. There's a press release, and that's it. And the press release right. is very oh, th- big. Yeah, let me just say, I'm 100 percent speculating on this. I don't have any basis for yeah, any of, of my claims. But uh-huh. it's just yeah, I mean, it's even even if it was EG. I'd be fucking happy. Oh like, no, I'm not know, saying it's a bad thing. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, like for yeah, everyone it's involved. Awesome. It's like yeah, good for Naniwa. Good to see him get picked up by another team. Let's hopefully, see him in more tournaments. I hope. I hope that he finds a happy spot here. Like I want <laughs> yeah. to see Naniwa in a more stable environment because he's he is such a talented player. You know. So funny yeah. story here that people, someone on Reddit found the IP of both websites and it's the exact same IP that Evil Geniuses is using. For evilgenuses.gg, evilgenuses.net, myeg.net, and this is how we play.com, which was their last promotional uh, little video they posted. So, I don't know, man. It's kind of. It I don't is, know. I'm sure is, that the I'm fucking sure conspiracy sure theories are, are going to start rolling with this, I'm sure. I'm but sure maybe Slash, or, maybe I've just like... been watching too much live on three at the end of the day. <laughs> and that's what it is. I don't know. I'm, I'm glad. I'm. I'm glad. Uh, like I think Sweden. Like I've, I've said this before. I think Sweden definitely. Like outside of Korea is probably one of the countries that can definitely foster talent in, and, oh, and definitely has yeah. shown over time that it's like you know, one of one of the better countries for gaming. So if, if any country can make yeah. it happen, it's probably them. You know, like as far as yeah. what you yeah. were mentioning, uh, all yeah. Swedish stuff. Yeah. I just I hope that they have a uh, really good support because we've I mean there's other teams kind of like this that stay in a region like Lowland Lions or something like that and the mm-hmm. thing is it's great to have teams like that that like if you're a player in that area like you know what I might be able to make it into this team one day. But yeah. like these are big names right like Nanoa like this is some serious stuff. You oh, I mean no Tide Hunter is the biggest name in Dota 2 right now like they they Oh, oh, then. oh yeah, just so They're to fucking conspiracy. huge. Yeah. Sweat to your conspiracy. Uh, More conspiracy <laughs> theories here. We didn't land on yeah, the moon. Is that uh, what you're about to tell me? <laughs> no. Uh, the like, 
the dream hack that No Tide Hunter won, um, yeah. where EG finished second. They they announced that then that they then had a, a sponsor, and uh, oh, yeah, since yeah. then they've been getting paid. That's so, what Lotus said yesterday on Live on Three. Is. Yeah, yeah, and, they, and he's been drinking pretty, Monster pretty in all of his interviews and wearing an Astro pretty, headset. They have it's pretty like, good money. Over, uh, <laughs> well, if he's drinking Monster in interviews, I think the discussion's over. I know. Yeah. That's why it's you're like, not what the to fuck? Drink anything in an interview, and if you are, it's because you have a sponsor that you need to show off. I, uh, I guess we, we can wait, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is exciting as fuck, so I'm yeah, happy no, for this Annie. Is, this happy, totally. happy for everyone. Oh, yeah. And again, awesome. even if it was EG. Uh, well, it's not, know, like it, it's not like, guys, if they join EG, fuck these motherfuckers. Like, God, no, no it's fucking it's actually, awesome, right? Yeah, it's great. Man, I, EG is like, uh, you know, it's obviously a big. They bring a lot of money in, man. They pay good salaries. Oh, yeah. They're setting the bar, yeah. and that's important. They treat their players yeah. good. And, 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 you know, they mentioned. Uh, Earlier in the year, this was the first time they had to turn down sponsors. So if there was one team in a position to start, you know, a second team, and, and, and perhaps in the efforts of not having the exact same sponsors or support, you know, start yeah. adding new people and, and new sponsors to the scene, then that's definitely EG. So mm -hmm. it, even if it was EG, very, very, very exciting news. Yeah, Perhaps no doubt. more. No doubt. Mm. Well, we'll end the show on that. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, congrats to both No Tide Hunter and Naniwa. Uh, I think Naniwa's first big event is going to be DreamHack uh, under the Alliance Clan tag, and No Tide Hunters will be the Raid Call EMS and Katowice, I think, uh, coming up the finals for theirs. So, congrats to both teams. Let's do some shoutouts, guys, and get the fuck out of here because we've almost had a three-hour show, and I was yeah. not anticipating that. So, uh, Moonglade, do some shoutouts, man. All right. Uh, shout out to my team, Team MV. Shout out to my sponsors, Frag Labs, Horize, and Plantronics. Uh, also, shout out to a Australian tournament that's happening this weekend. Starts tomorrow. Uh, ACL. Uh, I think you can catch all the action over like Twitch.tv slash ACL Pro SC2 or something like that. Uh, it's got all of Australia's talent, so it should be a good watch. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for thanks for having me on the show again. No problem. Thank you for coming on, Cat. Some shout outs. Yeah, per usual. Thank you guys uh, for having me on the show. Um, we'll be doing a fundraiser soon enough for the team house that we're planning to open uh, in the U.S. for Root. So if you are down to help with that, uh, we'll definitely... It's pretty fucking expensive, so we'll definitely need some help. <laughs> and uh, we'll be announcing that and, and the details about that and you know what, what you can get. It's probably going to be a, a pretty big stream marathon. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll, about that, you'll, you'll hear it soon. And... Uh, Thank you very much to, obviously, um, Das Keyword and uh, Twitch and Aver Media for sponsoring Root. And um, I think that's it. Thank you guys again. Uh, Dan, some shout outs. Really fun show today. Fun conversations and whatnot. Some really good debate about WCS. Really enjoyed it, guys. Thanks for, thanks for talking with me and all that. Um, uh, shout out to uh, Katz's fundraiser. I'll tweet that for you when it's it's going on. That's a, a noble cause. I do want to see more USA houses, and I hope they all go to the right area instead of, like, I don't know, Arizona, so that we can actually get, like, some more local content and, like, get a real scene going there. That's that's something I'd love to see. And shout out to uh, ACL in Australia because they actually put on sick events, and there's, like, a, there's a good crop of strong Australian players, so... If I see a link to that, I may watch some of that this weekend. Yeah, is there, there is a stream for that, right, Moonglade? Yeah, there, there is a stream for that. Uh, I wish I knew it off by heart. I'm trying to look for I think Maynard's bit. watching. He might... Maynard should know, man. He's going to be... Oh, he'll know. He's going to be casting. He'll him. know. Oh, yeah, he's a great ACL cast Pro, too. SC2. Uh, I think it's... Yep, twitch.tv slash ACL Pro SC2. All one word. Uh, check yeah, that out this that weekend. That is... If, you know, if, like, GSL isn't on and you're, you're Jones... For, for some uh, StarCraft, that is not going to be a bad choice, really. They have quite a f especially if you like Zerg, because almost every <laughs> player in that whole country is Zerg for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, in what country? And, uh, was huh? Australia. Yeah, was That's because Moonlight Zerg. Zerg. <laughs> I'm just, not even it's kidding. Like what happened it's in Korea with Boxer, like man. Yeah, uh, it's always worked like that, every single that, country. That, that it does happen. happen. Like, the best player, like Spurs, they're like, I want to be like boxers, so they choose Terran and play. And, <laughs> yeah. Like, Korea's Absolutely. been dominated by Terran ever since. Yeah, that, 
that literally happens. So Actually, often. the one thing I want to check: what Sky played human, right? Were there like was yeah. there an abnormal amount of human players in uh, China? Because that would prove mm -hmm. it. That's sure, we yeah. need three. Is there a I'm third? Sure. We can do Nanny one Sweden though. Stefano and France. No, no, Protoss is a little bit easier than the other races for to get to a reasonable level. Okay, that is true. He said it. <laughs> to get to a reasonable level, that's what I'm saying. Like, you can do four gates and get masters. So, anyways, big shout out to TT Sports, my sponsor. Uh, I have this has been like the busiest uh, ten days like of my life. I have really had almost no time, so I haven't been able to stream much this month. But uh, as of tomorrow, I'll be streaming completely regularly again. I'm going to be streaming basically every day. So uh, make sure you check that out. And that's all because uh, of TT Sports support. Uh, it's really awesome. And I'm so happy because I finally get to play a lot of StarCraft again. And uh, so, yeah, that's – and uh, check out my Twitter and Facebook forward slash Artosis on both. Awesome stuff. Uh, here on the channel, we've got roleplay coming up on Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, other than that – same time next week, Dan? Uh, yeah, next week. Um, wait, 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 wait. Yes, next week, yes. It's and the week, the week after, after that. The stream hack. Stream hack. Week after that, we're going to have to do it on, like, your Tuesday, my Wednesday, because I leave on Thursday. Cool. All right. It'll well, be a little dream hack preview episode. It'll be awesome. Go follow Saint Snorlax on Twitter, by the way, with all this WCS stuff. He's the number one anti-WCS fan, and it is funny shit reading his tweets. <laughs> He's, so a go, guy. <laughs> he's pretty funny yeah he's pretty funny go watch that other than that this has been state of the game we will see you guys next thursday at what is it 11 p.m eastern we are out thanks for watching peace